My name is Kaluna Spitfire and I'm a variety streamer on Twitch. In this channel, I do a lot of streamer support videos as well as highlight videos from my Twitch streams. Today's video is all about the updates coming to the Twitch integration for 7 Days to Die. As many of you probably know, Alpha 20 has just been released and with it comes updates to the integration as well. You might be interested in some of my previous videos about the 19.6 version of the integration, um, which I will link um, both above this way and um, below in the description. If you are new to the integration, I highly recommend checking out those videos because they are a really thorough look at the basics of using the integration, whereas this video is going to go over the updates coming for Alpha 20. The very first place you're going to see some differences between 19.6 and A20 is actually going to be in the general settings of Twitch right as you connect. So once you've connected into Twitch like I have here, you're going to see that there are three tabs of options for settings. Um, some of them are the same as you've seen before, just organized differently, and some are brand new. So allowing actions and votes, those, so actions was there before, but votes was not. So votes is added in to 20 um, and they have hordes and buffs and all sorts of things that you can allow your chat to vote on and they give the chat several options and you can turn them on and off either separately. You could play with just actions by turning off votes, which would be like what 19.6 was with all the new interactions on the actions board or you could play with it just votes and this might be really good if you want to have reduced clutter in your chat or you could play with both progression was there before but progression does affect votes as well so if you turn this off it will give you the hardest votes on day one um, so that is a choice. You can, of course, later change these settings. If you're, you know, late game stage, you'd like to turn progression off, go for it. You can. Um, Free stealing was always there. Global cooldown was always there. Spam delay, that's new. So this is when it's happened to me. It's happened to a couple other people I've seen where you get one person in your chat who has written a macro or has key binded to their keys um, the spawn commands and they're the only ones able to get spawns in before the cooldown bar is full because they will spam your chat with so many commands that no one else gets a word in edgewise basically um, and what this does is it forces them so even if they type that in chat only one of those per every three seconds two seconds one second and you can go up to five seconds, um, will go through. So for example, if they spam 100 in one second, which I've seen somebody do, only the first one will go through. On the next tab called interactions, you're going to see a whole bunch of things that were not there before. So some of them were when they were talking about actions. So actions during blood moon, you can turn on and off. Standard, like normal, turn it off or just the cooldown actions, so the nice ones. Actions during quests, now this is new. If you have noticed a lot of streamers like to pause or were really annoyed when their quests got destroyed because chat decided to murder them while they were on a quest. Um, you can do only nice things on the quest, standard. So if you like that chaos, or you could turn them off entirely during quests. Do note that as soon as you finish the quest, even if you're stuck someplace really strange, uh, it will trigger the actions to turn back on. So as soon as you collect your satchel or as soon as you kill the last zombie, it will then go off. And that goes off for everybody. So even if everybody in your party has not finished the quest, but you have, it will enable things to be spawned on everybody in your party. So be aware. Votes during Blood Moon. So this, of course, is new because votes are new. You can turn them on and off. Same thing for votes during quests and in safe zone. Do you want votes to go off whether you're in a safe zone or not? So no safe zone can stop the votes. That's a choice. Now boss votes. Boss votes are the dangerous ones. So votes where there is a boss horde of zombies or animals and they're very strong usually. They're very dangerous. And this is where a streamer is very likely to die. And the thing that's very difficult 
about these is that chat cannot help or hurt you. So they don't have access to the actions during a boss vote. All other votes, as soon as it goes off, they have access to their, their options. Again, if you are playing with both votes and actions on. During a boss vote, they do not have access to those actions. They cannot regen you, but they cannot hurt you either. The thing about this is that you get a reward at the end of completing a boss vote successfully with crates and things like that. And then if you die to the boss vote, chat anybody who voted for that boss or for any boss, if they voted at all during the boss event, they get rewarded with a number of points, which we will go over on the points tab. So on this part, you can choose, do you want a boss vote daily no matter what day it is, including Horde Day? Standard would be that you get one most days, but not on Horde Night. Or boss votes disabled, do you want them to have no boss votes at all? Some people don't like that challenge, and that's okay. Action cooldown was there in 19.6. Max daily votes. So this is just how many votes do you want to see? And this is something you can play with. You can play with as few as one and as many as 12. Vote time. This is how long voters have in order to vote. So you can adjust that based on your chat and how big your chat is really. Um, if you have a really large chat, you might want to up the length of time they have to vote. Vote daytime range. So over here you can see start time and end time. A short day would be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., average day 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., extended day 4 a.m. to 9 p.m., or all day. Um, so when do you want the votes to be possible? Under points, you can now choose how many points a viewer who is brand new to your channel, just coming into play and do integration for the first time with you, gets. So when 19 was out, it was 100 for everybody unless you went in and edited the XML. And now you can just adjust it to whatever you want. So if you're having an event day and you want to encourage new people to come in and participate, you might want to bump it up. Or if you really just like having numbers higher, you can, or if you want it lower, or nobody starts with points. They have to talk in order to get points. That's an option too. Um, this was here in 19. You want sing standard points, one point per 10 seconds, two points per 10 seconds, or three points per 10 seconds of talking. Pimpot, do you want it to be special points? Not No Pimpot at all, or regular points. That was there in 19. Viewer defeat reward. This one's new, though. And this one is um, when they murder you using the boss hordes from here, the boss votes. Um, if they win and you die to that boss, this is how many points the chat and anybody who, who voted gets. Now, you can also add in how many points you want for bits to give out. Standard would be one per bit, two per bit, three per bit. Raid points. How many points do you want to give the person who raids you when they raid you? You can turn it off entirely or you can change how much you want to give them. This is something that your mods were probably doing if you had this enabled. Um, and now your mods don't have to do as much work. Raid viewer minimum. So in order to give these points, how many people must be in the raid? Um, I highly recommend having a number that is bigger than one because people can raid you with one whether they stream or not. They don't even have to go live to do it. So I highly recommend not having one. Um, three is probably where a small streamer wants to be. And if you're a bigger streamer, you might want five or more. Sub gift points. Sub and gift sub points. So a sub points, how many do you want to add? So this was something that your um, mods were probably doing before if you had this enabled. And you can, of course, turn it off if you don't want to give any. And as you can see, it changes over here. Standard would be tier 1 getting 500 points, tier 2 getting 1,000, tier 3 getting 2,500. Um, gift sub points. So if they're giving a tier 1, they would get 500. So you can, of course, change this. If you want to encourage gift subs, maybe you want to give more points for gift subs than for regular subs. Um, so these are choices that you can make how you want 
This will happen automatically so your mods don't have as much work to do in regards to the Twitch integration. Once you have all your settings, click apply and you're ready to look at some of the new other things. Now there are a lot of new commands in the actions part as well as of course all of the new votes that are coming to the integration. And a really great place to find out more information about all of these new things as well as the old ones is going to be the Twitch Info Cog wheel. So when you go in here, you can go ahead and search by actions, votes, action history, and of course your leaderboard. Actions, if you click on any of these, it's going to tell you the game stage that it starts at, the cooldown, and that means the cooldown in here, so how long it will be grayed out and chat can't use it for. Is it a positive thing? Is it not? It also tells you how much it costs. Is it random daily, meaning some days it'll happen and some days it won't? Is it special points only? So you can set things to be special points only. I don't believe there's anything in the main integration um, that is special points only. So only things that you have adjusted in the XML or um, that you add in yourself are going to be special points. But if you do have any of those kinds of things added in, it will tell you here whether it's special points only or not. As far as votes, if you look at a vote, it's going to tell, so say it's an attack vote, it's going to tell you the start game stage when this attack is possible and the end game stage when this game, this attack is possible. Um, because some of them, they start out really small as like just a couple um, simple zombies and then they progress to harder zombies and harder and harder and harder. Um, and so they start at a game stage that's low and then the next harder thing becomes available at a certain game stage. So the higher game stage you go, the harder it will happen for these attacks. Um, this is also true if you're not using progression. If you're not using progression, the hardest things are available immediately. Then there's, of course, all the other things. You can have supply votes, so it'll tell you what those different ones look like and when they start and stop. If it's a buff vote, it's going to tell you when it starts and stops, but it's also going to tell you if it cancels another thing or doesn't allow something to happen. So basically anti-leech, if you have this vote for anti-leech and it happens and you have like that happening, which this isn't a vote, is it? It's a vote. Um, so say they have a vote for anti-leech or whatever, then it's going to not allow weaken melee, weaken range melee, no range headshot. It's the same thing for when they spawn them in. They have these things that are not allowed. So whatever it is. So shielded boss, it tells you what that means. So shielded boss is new. There's also shielded minions, shock, burn, and radiation that come with different hordes. And these are some of the boss attacks that I talked about earlier. Um, it will tell you that it will consist of this kind of zombie and the boss of this group in a shielded boss is immortal until the minions have been defeated. Um, so you can shoot that boss all day long and no damage will happen to them until all of their minions are dead. Same thing for shielded minions. Until you kill the boss, all the minions are immortal. Shock, if the, if the zombies touch you, it will shock you. Radiation, if the zombies touch you, it will cause radiation. If the zombies touch you and they have burn, it will burn you and you cannot put it out with water. This is a burn that stays with you. So be careful. These are very, very dangerous when they get to this stage. So game stage 30 um, is pretty dangerous, as you can see, um, because they are not just a simple bike or horde. It is much more dangerous. So you also get other things like supply votes, um, and they'll give you different things. Of course, it tells you when it starts and stops, it gives you different buffs like energize, um, Things like that are possible in the votes. So some of the new things that are available for different commands in here, as well as for votes, are things like celebrate, um, where there is, for a certain amount of time, all the zombies when you kill them, or animals when you kill them, turn into confetti, which is really fun and exciting. Also kind of encourages people to leave and go attack things because it is exciting. 
So another new thing that's coming to Alpha 20 is dance off. Um, and this can happen as a vote or as a action and it causes the zombies to break out into dance and there's a song that plays and it's super fun um, but it's listed as a red action which means it's bad and the reason it is bad is because if you get close to the zombies they will attack you and run all of the zombies will run um, and as soon as they are done dancing they will run so you kind of want to leave them alone when they're dancing but at the same point um, your chat can spawn in a whole bunch of zombies and they're all dancing and then as soon as the boat goes off now you have a huge horde of things attacking you so it is considered a bad thing so you can attack in the middle of the dance but then they run at you or you can wait to the end and they run at you or you can enjoy the dance and take your chances so dance off is a new thing that's exciting and fun to the integration there silly so this causes silly sounds to happen. Um, and basically it's things like making your guns go pew pew or, um, you know, things to go bonk um, and just make silly sounds that wow. are kind of cartoony. Da, 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 da. Pew, pew. Reverse. Reverse does exactly what you probably think it does. It turns you 180 degrees around, which is if your chat times it well, can be detrimental. <laughs> Confuse. So Confuse is basically a very dangerous debuff where your controls are mixed up. So your W key and your S key on your keyboard are switched. And I believe your um, if you're using controller, I don't know what controls there because I'm a keyboard player, but basically your main forward and backward controls are completely switched. And then after 30 seconds are up, they switch back. So what that means is for about 10 to 15 seconds, you're getting used to switching your fingers in that moment. And so that can cause a lot of damage to happen to you because you're confused and maybe you're running into the zombies instead of backing away. But then it also happens again as soon as the debuff goes off after that 30 seconds, you have to switch your brain around again to go back to playing normally. Um, and so it kind of happens twice and it is can be a very dangerous debuff and chat really enjoys this one. No robo is basically your robots won't work. Your turrets and sledges that are robotic will not work for 30 seconds. Uh, no vehicle. It will cause you to have damage for that time that you are on the vehicle. Um, if this is on. Same thing for um, no safe. Uh, is that a, that's a vote only one. Uh, safe. So no safe. And you take damage while you're in a safe area, like a trader or a land claim area. No explosives. It will stop you from being able to use explosives. Just like it would stop you from shooting a gun, using melee, um, if you had the other one. So it also stops you from doing that. So no stealth is um, a new one that's being added as well. And it's a little bit silly because it sounds like you're farting um, in the game. That's the sound they chose to use. Um, but what it does is kind of dangerous because especially if you're playing with feral sense on, it alerts nearby zombies and animals to your presence and to your party's presence um, for 30 seconds. So local zombies will know where you are. This can be particularly dangerous at night um, and you will have other zombies come and attack you while chat is also trying to kill you with their own zombies. So painting is a debuff that is a visual one um, that causes the world around you to look like an oil painting, like a little Monet painting. Um, and it is just a visual buff, just like blur. Um, and it's a little gentler for a lot of people with vision issues so this might be the only one some people with vision issues who are playing might choose to keep on so and of course you can of course go and disable all of these actions if some of these bother you the nice thing about a20 is if you disable an action in a game it does stay disabled deafen so deafen is very dangerous as a debuff it causes everything around you to be really quiet and hard to hear so you can hear a couple things but they're very strange sounding and um, if people are spawning things on you like say a demo 
Um, they can sneak up behind you because you don't hear it. Same thing with wolves, dogs, things like that. Like, you just won't hear what's going on around you. You have to be very vigilant, and it can be a very dangerous debuff. A fun one that I think a lot of people are excited about is spawning a mutated. Um, so this is Bubbles, affectionately named. The new zombie that is coming to A20 is able to be spawned specifically through the integration starting at in stage 35. Yeah, 35. Tourist has also been added. Um, so they were just listed under tough before. Now you can have a zombie tourist. Um, that is a specific spawn that you can choose instead of just having spawn tough. And of course, if you go through all of these, you can go ahead and turn them on and off as much as you want. You can disable them. There are, of course, tips in here as there were before. I highly encourage you to read them. They are very helpful um, when you are trying to figure out what things do and how things work. Especially if you are new to the Twitch integration, these are very helpful pieces of information. We also have Big Heads, which is an action and a vote. And as you can see, Jen behind me has a really big head, but it also occurs with animals and zombies. So for new votes, we also have a couple things that are vote only. Um, so jumbled backpack is one of them. And this is where your backpack will jumble up and every time you open it, it will be jumbled again. So there is no organizing it. There is no touching the this and to sort. Nourishment is one that a lot of the chat might be confused by. Basically, it heals food and water over time for 60 seconds, so your food and water will go up to max. Resourceful is one that is commonly confused. Your crafting and scrapping speeds are increased and you harvest double the materials. So this is a really good one if you are crafting, if you are scrapping, or if you are harvesting. So your chat wants to do this if they're being helpful. So another thing that has been added to the integration for A20 is actually a set of new admin commands. Um, and you, of course, have your checkpoints, your game stage checks um, that your chat can use as per usual. Um, you now have, and you can do commands, and it will list the commands that are possible for everybody, including mod commands. So some of these are mod only. One that is really helpful is actually underscore backpack. That's not listed in this set of commands currently um, because it really is just mods only um, or the streamer themselves. If you die in game and then you need to get to your backpack, especially if it's really far away, a teleport is possible if that is something you choose to use. So you may want to just inform your mods whether or not you wish to use this um, and when the situations might arise that you want to use it for. Another new command is, of course, for the new possibility of twitch underscore events dot XML. In that XML file, you can add in things that you can do during stream, like People will give you bits, subs, gift subs, or rates. And you, not only can you give them points like I showed you before, but you can also trigger zombies or maybe you want to drop ammo supplies or something to occur when that happens. So say you set up a wolf to spawn when somebody does a regular sub, but you want to test it and you're not online and you can't really just sub to yourself. So what do you do? You can test it. And you do redeem underscore sub the name, so Luna Spitfire, and the number of months they have been viewing. So if this is their first one, so of course you can go in and in the XML and be setting up different things to happen per number of months. You can set up a different thing to happen for somebody who has been subbed for a year versus somebody who's subbing for the first time, that is possible. And so you would just type this into chat and whatever you have set would go through. 
And if it doesn't work while you're in game, then you know that you didn't set it up correctly. So this is a great way for you to test those things that you've designed and put into your game. Another one that you can test is redeem bits. And of course the viewer's name and the amount. So say it's a thousand bits. Maybe you set up that grace is going to spawn when a thousand bits are given. You can go ahead and test this out as soon as you've set it up on your XML sheet and then you can go into the game and test it out. So another one that you can do is redeem gift sub. Put of course the name and then the number of subs that that person has gifted. So you can have different spawns for different numbers of gift subs. So you can reward people even bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can design this all yourself in that Twitch events XML. And the last command that's new to this is redeem raid. So you can give somebody, whoever you're is raiding, um, you can test this one out and how many viewers, maybe they had 35 viewers and you would test out that. So theoretically you could have different raid things that happen based on the number of people who come in on that raid. So that could be really exciting too. The nice thing about this is maybe you had exited the game temporarily and then a raid happened while you were exited the game for whatever reason. And you really want to give that person the points. You want to give them the credit. You want the spawns to happen. As soon as you get back to the computer and are able to log back into the game, you can do this while live and it will give them the points for it and it will cause the thing to happen. So you can use this command while live in order to make those things happen for your chat if you happen to be disconnected. Keep in mind that these things can be on pause, if you are still attached to the integration, they will happen. They just might be waiting for a vote. They might be waiting for cooldown or they might be waiting for you to leave the safe zone. So check those things first before you press this. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please click that thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you would like to catch me live on Twitch, the link to my channel is in the description below.